Hi, I'm Randy Vance. I'm at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show with Stephen Darty, the founder of Solus Boats. We happen to be on a new 41cc that Boating Magazine did a feature story on in a cruise to the Bahamas, pitting it against a similar boat with outboard engines. Talk to me a little bit about some of the things you discovered in that outboard versus stern drive trip. So with the stern drive, the weight is inside the boat instead of hanging out over the transom. And that afforded us a, to get the bow down and a much better ride in rough seas. That was the first thing we noticed. We also have, at low speeds, it's very torquey, and you put the engines in gear and it's very responsive at the docks. It's quiet, you don't have outboard engines hanging off the back, and you know, over the years, outboard engines have just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and more accepted. We put multiple engines on the back, and it became accepted. So now the first time we're able to remove those engines and see what a boat could really be like, and that's what we have here. So you can run 60 miles an hour in this stern drive configuration, maybe as opposed to 70 or 80 with the outboards. Right. But what you said earlier was what kind of struck me. It's, it's the way this boat runs at normal fishing and cruising speeds that makes it unique. Right, it's fun to run 70 or 80 miles an hour. It's fun to run 60 miles an hour. And so this boat will run at 50 miles an hour all day long, and with a diesel, Keep in mind, you just pull it off the stops and you're just about at cruise. But at 40 knots offshore, offshore with big seas, you can run all day long like that in big seas. In an outboard, you might have to back it down a little bit. And then the other thing is fuel economy, especially nowadays, a major difference with this boat. So you guys had said that you went to the Abacos and back, um, basically didn't, almost didn't need to buy fuel. 70 gallons is what you needed to get home safe. Right and that's a crazy amount of, uh, of boating. Right, well, so we spent $5,000 in the outboard and $2,000 on the diesel. Well, that and makes a lot of payments. Thing, yeah, yeah. The, the other thing was the time that we spent fueling up. It takes a long time to fuel up a big, thirsty outboard versus uh, the diesel. That's true, well, they're running higher higher capacity pumps and right. bigger nozzles and, yep. and, uh, and you're putting in less to start with. Now you kind of discussed the great amount of torque that comes from these diesel engines and the shift in center of gravity giving this boat that inboard feel. But what else gives you that torque and sea keeping capability in this boat? So with all that torque and horsepower in the engines, you've got to have a good connection to the water. And they achieve that with a dual prop technology. Well that's been a proven process or a proven technology in a lot of boats, but naturally it makes a lot of sense to bring it in here. So they had the engineering behind it to be able to really pull it off, and they decided to just go ahead and put the money into it and make it happen. Cool. Tell me about the stern area of this boat. You said that this is representing a new design for you. Okay, so this boat, uh, we were commissioned by Volvo to build this boat for them. Right. In a specific configuration. Um, it was a prototype. We did it all with temporary tooling, which we do everything in-house. We, we do all the design and tooling in-house. We're one of the few companies out there that do that. After this, we heard from the public, we listened, uh, which we do a lot, and we came up with this new design with um, just a few changes. We have a, a little bit different stern seat. Uh, we have a mezzanine seat that's a sit-in instead of a sit on top like this. And we also added air conditioning in the back. Um, everything else pretty much stayed the same. We're all getting used to giving up this fishing space to outboards, but this brings it back. Well, we gained it all back. So, right. you know, normally now we're fishing over these big outboard engines that are uh, span the entire width of the boat. They're taller than ever. And when you look at fishing over those engines, it's a long ways. With this boat, it's a very short distance to the back of the swim platform and there's no height involved. Your lines could actually touch the swim platform and you'd be good. So Stephen, talk to me about the initial investment in this boat as opposed to an outboard equipped boat. So it's gonna be very similar. This will be a little bit more money than an outboard, but these engines are forever engines. You just can, you can rebuild these engines and they're gonna last forever. An outboard, you basically take it off and replace it. And the stern drives on this are different than any other stern drives on the market. These were built for salt water. Mm -hmm. They made some major advancements that killed stern drives of the past. Yeah. And so I think all those challenges have been corrected. So I did some research on that and I found out they're using titanium ceramic coatings inside and outside the drives. They're also doing what they call active corrosion protection, which reverses that electrolysis process by turning basically the stern drive from an anode to a cathode. Right. And then another thing that I thought was cool is that they've got water sensors in the bellows and in the transmission 
And if any water is sensed in there, for instance, if that bellows is compromised, it reports it right to the helm, so you know immediately to go get some routine maintenance, basically. Right, right. So those are the things that kill a stern drive or any engine that's in the water. And they figured out what, what did it, and they came up with a response to it and, and solved it. And so coatings and electrolysis being solved, and you know now we, can, now we can leave something in the water for a long term without losing it. Well, and even more, we've returned to the, the resonance and the fishability and the, the comfort level of, of an inboard boat in a saltwater fishing environment. Right. Now an inboard is more viable in this kind of boat. One thing I've been curious about is you fabricate everything on the boat in your own factory. But when I was over at the factory, you were doing some pretty secret stuff over there that was intriguing to the general marketplace. Right. So we're always looking to build a better product. Yeah. And um, we're, we're building secret stuff every day. Um, and so you're going to have to wait till you know, probably six months away for the project that you were looking at um, before we're going to really announce that. But uh, we do a lot in-house mainly to keep it uh, under our control. Um, we can really do challenging things that would be difficult to do if we were outsourcing it. Cool. Hey, I'm Randy Vance. I'm at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show on the Solus 41cc with Stephen Darty, the founder and builder of this boat.